Before we start today's show, we would just like to take a brief moment of silence to acknowledge the victims of the Uvalde uh, Elementary School shooting. So we're going to stop and take a 30 second break just for everyone to kind of think about what happened today and reflect on that. And then after we take our break, we're going to go into the show today. So here we go with a 30 second break. All right. So before we move into our show for today, we just want to say, you know, thoughts and prayers are never enough. And obviously we want to see these types of things come to an end. But, you know, given the the platform that we have, we do want to say our condolences, our thoughts and prayers to all of the people involved in that incident. And we are thinking and praying for you all. Hopefully, you know, people can reach out with support for them, whether it be financially, emotionally, spiritually. And, you know, everyone can start rebuilding in that community. So Again, very unfortunate situation. It's tough to go from this to talking about basketball. We just wanted to make sure we got our thoughts out on that situation before we got into today's show. So thanks for everyone taking moments out with us. And now here we go into the rest of our show. Houston, Roger, we copy and you're standing by for your TV. They throw it up. Oh, there goes Jalen Green. Humans can't fly. Welcome in to another episode of the Launchpad Podcast presented by Clutch City Control Room. As always, I'm your host, Don Knock. You can follow me on Twitter at Don Knock. You can follow the pod at Clutch City CR on Twitter. If you go into the description of the Twitter bio, there's the link for the YouTube, the Apple Podcast, and the Spotify um, links. We I think we're getting close to 875 subscribers on YouTube. So again, Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We very much appreciate it. Thank you for everyone who continues to send in amazing YouTube comments. Love getting those. We've done a better job at responding to those recently. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do. We are trying to push for 1,000 subscribers, so we would really appreciate that. As always, I am joined by my host over there, Paolo Alves. Paolo, go ahead and tell the people where they can find your stuff. First of all, you need to give credit to the people. We're at 892. Okay. Okay. Um, I apologize. I haven't checked yet today. So that means 30 <laughs> amazing of you guys or girls have subscribed since I checked it yesterday, which is awesome. Thank you so much. I do yeah. not uh, disregard your contributions to. Our it's okay. Society. We all know. We all know you can't do math. It's okay. Numbers are not your strong suit. I have promised that there would be no math. And now I'm unfortunately being forced to do it. So. Yeah, y'all can find me on Twitter at PaulAlvesNBA. That's P-A-U-L-O-A-L-V-E-S-N-B-A. Everything I do from podcasts like this one to the live shows on Twitter spaces, we'll find self linked on there. And Jackson, our super special guest, bi-weekly as per usual. Go ahead and tell the people where they can find everywhere where you do your damage. <laughs> everywhere where I do my damage. I love that. The 17 million podcasts a week. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at JT Gatlin. Of course, be sure to check out locked on rockets Monday through Friday coverage of your Houston rockets. Uh, the state of the rockets podcast that I host with none other than the Mastodon himself, Roosh Williams. And of course, locked on NBA Mondays each and every week to get your week started off right with the three biggest stories across the NBA landscape. And now I'll have to throw it back to you one Don knock because that intro that everybody just heard at the top of the show was made by our own in-house like music master Don Knock himself coming up with the beat, doing the mix down, adding the audio to it. It is the newest uh, podcast intro, the hottest podcast intro in Houston now, and it's all courtesy of him. The fastest growing, you should say, because when you you start from zero and you go to one, you're growing pretty fast. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, 
I spent most of the day Friday coming up with that. Uh, some of y'all that are in group chats with us may have received that blank music from me asking if you thought it was good or not. Some people didn't respond. Um, some people gave me amazing feedback. So I want to thank everyone that did give me feedback, including Jackson and Paolo. Uh, y'all gave me some really awesome feedback. So I appreciate y'all. Um, and yeah, it was, it's weird because like I used to do some music stuff and that's why I like, I kind of knew what I was able to do. Uh, with the intro stuff but it's just weird sharing that world kind of with the sports world and also like music is something that's very personal to me so like having other people you know hear and interpret and you know give thoughts on my music it's always very like it's a very personal thing for me so I want to thank like I said thank everyone that gave me feedback on that and thank everyone that gave me positive feedback too um, appreciate you guys uh, our show today we had done a cold opener and kind of talked about um, some stuff in there if you didn't hear that, go back and listen to that. We just want this episode to kind of be a you know a break from the all the things going on in the world right now. So obviously it's a very it's a time with a lot of gravity going on right now. But we just want today's episode to just be a time that you can take a break from what's going on and talk some rockets, and then you know when you're ready, get back to everything going on there. So thanks for rocking with us today. Obviously a very important day in real life as well. But we're gonna have some great rockets talk for y'all too. So. Getting into this Rockets talk, we're going to talk about something that happened late last night, and that was Jalen Green going on the show with Bill Simmons. Um, not not friend of the show, Bill Simmons. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Jalen Green and Bill Simmons are best friends, apparently. So well, he Jaylen said that Green was Jalen Green said, said that was his dog for real. All right. Like that is truth. <laughs> Though we have the receipts, that is straight facts, evidence. Don, come that, on. That hurt my heart a little bit to hear. I'm not gonna lie, because uh, I'd like to be his dog for you. What about me? I'm just, <laughs> I live right here. Like I guess I don't matter. I'm okay. gonna go Photoshop the tweet just for you, so it says Don knock my dog for real. Like we should all just go start Photoshopping <laughs> the Jalen tweet with our own names in there and just sharing it. I would not be mad at that. That'd be a funny flip. Palo so, Al's my dog for real. <laughs> Need that, need that expeditiously. So, Jalen went on Bill Simmons' show. Unfortunately, um, he started off when he was on there talking about when he played against the Lakers. So he mentioned, you know, playing against the Lakers, scoring thirty-two points in March, and he said that trend that started my trend upward a little bit for my confidence and everything. And I think that was something that was really not obvious to see, but you could tell like late in that game, right? You could see kind of the wheels turning in his head that like. Hey, I'm starting to cook these guys. Like, maybe, maybe we got something here. And like, Jalen's not someone that really lacks for confidence anyway. Like, you can just kind of tell, like, see how he carries himself, see how he dresses himself, you know, see how he goes about his business. And like, but that's where it really started to cut through, kind of like on the NBA level. Pal, you're, you're giggling over there. Do you have some thoughts on this? <laughs> yeah, Jalen's thinking. Well, maybe I'm good at basketball, actually. I am no, thinking that. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm surprised it was the 32-point Lakers game because even leading up to that game, you will have been playing pretty well for a couple of weeks. Um, that being said, I think I think it's ah, man, am I really about to be mean, to Steven Silas? I think it's pretty telling that Taylor had the best game, of, like one of probably the best game of the season for him, and then the game afterwards. He scored 11 points and only played 27 minutes because, well, it was Dallas and they were getting blown out. And they're like, thank you, Salas. Thank you for not giving us Jalen Green for, for some more time around. But anyways, anyways, I think just looking at, at the games from there on, I think it is true that he did play very well um, from there until the end of the season. He was already playing well. But it goes to show how important it is for these guys, even a guy that's as confident as Jalen to just get a good game against what we now know wasn't a good team, but at the time you look at LeBron and you're like, okay, I'm I, I, I'm cooking LeBron's team. That that's gotta be enough for it to be a confidence booster. And then it, there, there was there were those clutch plays where Kevin Green was legit just taking over. Uh, I think this was also the game where Chang Goon hit a hit a three like to end the game and everyone was going nuts because everybody everything good's happening this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it goes to show that. Sometimes with rookies, you really don't know what's going on. You can't convince me that Jalen was a, not a scrubber, wasn't the type of player that he was to end the season uh, prior to the Lakers game. But the Lakers game set off a switch, and 
the talent that was already there came into full display and he, was, he managed to put it together. I think that's something that's really important. I think that's something that we need to pay attention to with whoever we draft next year. And we, if Shingun gets the starting spot and gets heavy minutes with Shingun as well, because we saw Shingun last year, but not to the same extent that we saw Jalen. And so he might go through some of the same phases as being a starter and teams game planning for him. So I think that's that's something to take into consideration going into the next season as well. Jackson, what are your thoughts on the, this Lakers Lakers game and how it affected Jalen's development? I mean, this was, you know, when when reviewing Jalen's season and just looking at some of the most important games from this past Rocket season, I think this Lakers game was, to me, the best game of the Rocket season, like, as a whole. And it was easily the game of the season for Jalen Green because it was really that moment where it felt like he arrived, right? Where he had the chance to close out, you know, a, I can't say a talented team, right? Seeing as how they're both lottery teams. But, um, right, he had the chance to go toe-to-toe with the Lakers, with LeBron, with Russ, you know, three future Hall of Famers on the floor, right? At one point, I think it was like at one point in the top of the fourth quarter, it was like you had LeBron, Russ, and Mello like on the floor against like the baby Rockets. Like wait, it was wait. like one veteran and... Don't what? you mean three Hall of Famers as in Westbrook, LeBron, and Jalen Good, good one, good one. I mean, you're, you're right. I'm not joking. Look, look, hey, that's three, Rocket look, Legend Kamalo Anthony. You're just I was about to say me. three. Yeah, look, three, three future this. Hall of Famers and three like Hall of Fame Rockets players, right? You know, future, you know, Rockets <laughs> yeah. legends in Carmelo Anthony, Russell Westbrook, and, <laughs> and Jalen Green. So, no, legitimately, right? This was just it was that like that coming of age game for Jalen Green, and it really felt like that first that first step in the right direction of like, yo, like we'd seen Jalen kind of dominate some games before either like the three ball was falling or like he was able to get inside and like get the downhill game going. This was the one where it really felt like a fir- the first complete game from Jalen, right? Because he hit some big shots from outside. He was working the mid range. He was snaking, pick and rolls. He was finishing inside. He was getting it done in a variety of ways. And the 10 0 run, like the personal 10 0 run in overtime was just like the cherry on top. I, and it wasn't even like we just say the 10-0 run in overtime, but it was like 19 points across fourth quarter and overtime to put the Lakers away, which is what made that game so damn impressive. So the next thing that we'll talk about that they discussed on the pod was some of the influences that Jalen Green kind of attributes to how he plays and that he drew inspiration from. And those were Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. He said those were his biggest basketball influences and he said that he started watching Kobe videos in high school and used them, you know, to, to you know, model his game after. He also mentioned, um, you know, the post game that Kobe had as something that he wanted to involve in his game. But he hasn't been able to really implement that yet because he needs to add some strength to be able to, to maneuver in the post. And I think that's something that a lot of Rockets, you know, fans, analysts, fanalysts talked about as well. Of You know, once Jalen can add a little bit of strength, we may see more of the full package come out. And, you know, Paolo, you're someone who has said Jalen Green is the next Michael Jordan on the timeline a couple times. So, you know, how did you hear about this, you know, validating all of your takes? I mean, I I did not say that. I did say that. What what did you say? What did you say as we get it clear for the record? I said I think Jalen Green has a top three player, of all, a top three shooting guard of all time potential. And, and I stand by that. And to me, it's... I don't want to kind of divert from the topic, but still. To me, it's... You, you've got the tools. You've got the mentality. You've got the talent. What else do you really need? Uh, you've got you've got the opportunity early on to put everything in display. And you've got the work ethic. I don't see what's there to limit Keon Green ceiling. There's no one skill that he cannot do at all. We've seen him play defense. We've seen him play make. We've seen him score the ball at all three levels. I don't see what can't he do to to become... uh, When players have that much talent and and have that combination, it usually comes down to, well, how many titles can you win? And that's what's going to define you as top three shooting guard of all time or a top six, seven, depending on what you want. Uh, James Harden probably would be a top three shooting guard of all time if he had won two or three titles. Um, and I think it's it's the same with Kevin. And the fact that he modeled this game around him, I can definitely see Kobe. I was not. I'm. I mean, I wasn't following the NBA when Kobe was playing, but I've watched more Kobe games than I've watched MJ games. So I'm not really sure what 
MJ's game in general looked like. But it's very similar to Kobe's because Kobe modeled most Kobe of his game modeled his game after MJ. After MJ so well, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes sense. And I think that the one difference that I I, you ju- I, I just spotted the naked eye is. I think Kellen moves a lot more off the ball than, than Kobe did. At least maybe I'm just watching later career Kobe and that's a different Kobe, but uh, I, I think Kellen moves a lot more off the ball and I think it might not be inspiration from this player, but I think he reminds me a lot of of Curry in the sense that when he's not with the ball, he's relocating all the time. He's he's navigating screens. He's he's <laughs> the I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to peep that out in post to make sure you know. Going, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I think just said they. Well, yeah, he re- he of... reminds me of Redacted. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's definitely coming. But but yeah, I think that 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 that's a part of it. That's that, and that's part of what's so appealing about Killen's game or, and about how he will fit with all of these or any of these stars that might join Rockets while he's here. Uh, so I think I can definitely see the Kobe inspiration. I mean, if you go uh, shout out to Aryan at our shiny. Uh, on Twitter, he made that compilation. He made that compilation where it's Kobe shots inter- uh, like inter- uh, um, intertwined with with Kellen Green shots from the same positions, and it, it looks so similar. It's so like it's so mind blowing. I, I know you can do that probably with most players in the NBA just without big the sample sizes, but I thought, I thought that shout out to him for that. I thought that was really cool. To your point about Jalen operating off ball, that was one of the areas that I continued to highlight that really stood out to me throughout the season was seeing, and I even got to the point where like I asked Silas about it at one point. I was like, hey, so like Jalen's moving without the ball really well. And he was like, yeah, we call those windows. Like those are important things that we focus on with him specifically, like things that the coaching staff were preaching to him about how to be effective at finding these quote unquote windows where, okay, like, you know, the play is developing Jalen's in the, in, you know, the weak side corner KPJ is like at the top of the key, like initiating the offense and KPJ starts driving in and maybe like the low man rotates over and like the help defense rotates and then takes away like the pass to the weak side corner away from Jalen. So then Jalen like runs that baseline route to get to the strong side corner. And then, you know, has that opening on that we on that other side to get a kick out for a wide open three. We saw him as the season went along, get more and more comfortable about moving without the basketball and finding those windows, you know, to be effective and to have opportunities to get those wide open shots within the Rockets offense. And that is absolutely something to be, you know, to to build upon moving forward, thinking that Jalen isn't, I don't think he's going to be that like traditional, like heliocentric star, like has to have the ball in his hands, you know, is unwilling to or stubborn enough that he won't move without the basketball. And I do think, that Steven Silas and the coaching staff deserve some credit for forcing those lessons on him early, right? Because again, this Rockets team could have very easily been like, yo, number two overall pick, you got all the talent in the world, we're going to put the rock in your hands, go have like a 35.5% usage rating, and you're going to like have terrible efficiency, but you're going to get up like 25, 30 shots a night, and maybe you'll win rookie of the year, whatever, right? They could have done that, and that's what a lot of Rockets fans wanted to see. Right, they wanted to see Jalen with the rock in his hands. Everybody else get out of the way, do whatever. There were jokes made about Jalen being like PJ Tucker, like stationed off in the corner, you know, within the offense, especially in early parts of the season. Tim Hardaway Jr. and Trevor Ariza actually. That was fine. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Some some people said PJ Tucker as well. Point being, right? I do think there was like maybe a more of a middle ground, right? Where I do think Jalen wasn't spotlighted enough in the early going. That said, I do think there was a direct like benefit to the coaching staff not wanting to like rush things by putting the ball in his hands right away by getting him acclimated to the idea of, all right, you're going to have some reps on the ball. You're also going to have some reps off the ball. And again, part of that plays into KPJ needing to learn the point guard position, right? He needed the rock in his hands the majority of the time that he was on the floor to run and orchestrate the offense because the Rockets needed to see what they had there. At the end of the day, it's never as white and black as people try to make it out to be. There's a lot more gray area, a lot more nuance in what this team tried to accomplish this past season. But if you look at the entire big picture, right, if you look at the macro of things, you walk away incredibly impressed that Jalen now has this like like diverse skill set is like you put the ball in his hands and he can get it done going downhill, you know, creating his own shot, creating for others or be an off ball scoring threat as well. So if you bring in another guy like a Paolo Bancaro, who you can put the ball in his hands and have him be the primary playmaker, then good things can happen. If you've got a, a star two guard who can play off of that. 
Yeah, and and just before you you move on to the next the next, I brought I up Paolo Bancaro and Paolo couldn't help no, himself. No. He was like, no, 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 we got to stick on this topic for it's as long as Jackson will let me. <laughs> it's it's not about Paolo actually. It's about Kalen. Uh, one of the things that I that I saw him do that really reminded me of Curry is sometimes he had the ball in his hands and he would drive and he would snake the pick and roll and he would pass the ball off to someone, be it in the post or whatever, and he would instantly relocate and have a play in mind in specific where he passes the ball and he instantly runs back out to the perimeter and gets the ball back and it's a wide open three because defenses aren't used to players moving this much. Uh, usually when a, play, when a star player or a, score, or a scoring guard gives the ball up, Kind of like James Harden, he's sagging off, like he's lazily going to the three-point line, and so you have some time to to adjust. Dylan doing that is really unique, and that's why that's sort of what the the the, the Curry comparison came came up is when he's driving and he gives the ball up and he immediately relocates. There's going there's like there's going to be very few defenders in the league that will have the energy or and especially at the shooting guard position where there's so many stars that are going to follow you around because just that alone makes you hard to guard like it's not about how fancy your crossover is or how deadly your step back is sometimes just moving a bunch will um wear your opponents down and that works on the defensive end so you can get more open shots and on the offensive end because if you're getting guarded by a player that has some offensive uh role on their team they're going to be worse on offense as well because well you're just so damn annoying to guard you're constantly chasing him around Shout out to, oh. cause I, I don't think we just keep going back and forth on this one topic for the rest of the podcast. No, like, cause I mean, right. We get like the PTSD flashbacks to James Harden, right? Like refusing to ever move without the basketball, just yeah. like, you know, can't hanging out the top of the key, like almost all the way back near the logo, because unfortunately like he was the safety valve for the Rockets offense, right? He would, he would initiate the offense. And then like, if, if the play didn't end with James Harden taking a shot, he would float back out towards the top of the key, and then sometimes they would reset it, kick it back out to him. You see the exact same thing with Luka constantly in the Mavericks offense. You also, surprisingly, right, because you like this guy was like touted as being like Steph Curry light, you see the same thing with Trey Young. Trey Young does the exact same thing where he floats around the top of the perimeter and very rarely relocates without the basketball to create an opportunity within the offense. And I think that's, again, that's one of the the cons, one of the downsides to those heliocentric offenses where you have that one player who is like the sole engine of the offense. They pretty much have to be back out there ready to reinitiate the play if it doesn't actually generate a shot on the first pass through. Whereas the Warriors with Steph Curry and all the different playmakers that they have around him, guys who can either attack off the bounce or then create and draw up another play, you know, without the ball having to be in his hands, ben gives him the benefit of the opportunity to be able to move without the basketball. And we saw the Rockets do a lot of that with Jalen Green, albeit they didn't do it nearly as well as the Warriors <laughs> do it, but it's a glimpse into the future of what Jalen Green, accompanied by another star or two, could potentially unlock because, again, he doesn't have to have the ball in his hands to be effective. Yeah, and earlier in the year, we – me and Paolo, when we would talk about this, I would bring up a lot of times where it was like, is this coaching staff trying to go all the way anti-Harden, right, and make him play like almost more off-ball than he needs to to really learn and drill those principles? And it sounds like, you know, maybe they weren't thinking about it in that manner, but that is kind of what they were getting at. So interesting to, to hear about that. Um, we are at about 20 minutes on this segment, so I'm going to say let's go to break. We come back. We have a good – so a good amount of Jalen Green quotes from this podcast to get to. So we'll get to some of those. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how, how long that's going to carry us. But uh, don't go anywhere. We will be right back. And continuing into our second segment here on the Launchpad Podcast, we are continuing on with Jalen Green's unfortunate interview with Bill Simmons. Uh, not unfortunate that Jalen Green was there. We love Jalen, of course, but unfortunate that, you know, had to be with Bill Simmons. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some Bill Simmons fans in my replies, and that's okay. Uh, one of my look, good look, friends look, is a look. big Bill Simmons fan, so right. I know I had to do Look, I, I do want to preface this, right? It, like, I, I gave Bill Simmons all, kind of, all kinds of hell for his comments towards Jalen, and, and, and this is something that we can address right in this, which they did. They briefly talked about, you know, and as we're kind of navigating the topics, we're kind of going in a linear fashion here, walking through what they discussed, you know, in the one-on-one -on -one interview. But, you know, at the end of the day, I still don't agree with the comments that, you know, Bill Simmons had towards Jalen Green. I still think it was unprofessional as all hell. That said, I will also give Bill Simmons his credit. What he is good at and the reason that he's like a successful media personality in the way that he is, he's a damn good interviewer. Like like the questions that he asked Jalen Green, the way the conversation flowed, the answers that he was able to get out of him, it was a very quality interview because unfortunately, 
even though like I've had opportunities to be in like media availability sessions with Jalen Green, like have those types of opportunities to ask him questions, it's a much more guarded environment, right? Like you're not going to get good answers in like a media availability setting because it's just, it's much more like canned, like generic. Oh, well, you know, we're going to fight hard in the next game. Oh, it's an unfortunate loss. Like you're getting like the very generic responses. Whereas in a podcast like this, a one-on-one -on -one dynamic, Bill Simmons was able to get the best out of Jalen Green more like he dug further and got more out of Jalen Green than it feels like we've gotten like as like, you know, local media and, you know, Rockets media in the last like year. Unfortunately, it was a really quality interview. And so even though I can still like dislike Bill Simmons for how he handled it and the fact that he didn't really like actually apologize to Jalen Green for the whole situation, I, he still conducted a really solid interview. So I'll give him credit where credit's due. Right. Well, let me balance. I give him out. no credit. I'm giving yeah. him no credit. So this was, this was way too positive. Uh, this is a, an anti Bill Simmons podcast. So well, I'll just be, I'll just there finish go, off. Baby. There we go. I'll just finish off by saying, well, well, um, Bill Simmons, we don't like you, and 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 you're still property of Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez. Thank you very much. I endorse this message. I love it. Okay. Paolo so. became about a thousand percent more violent when he became an Astros fan. Like I'm just gonna put that out there. Paolo started <laughs> learning baseball and then wakes up and chooses violence every single day of his life. Because because now I have something to talk shit about. The Rockets are terrible. I can't talk shit about with the Rockets. Like <laughs> oh, I was a min in the Harding days. I was a menace. I can't wait to get back to that. Let, let Jalen Green put up like 25 a game and I'll be right back at it. Don said he's gonna be back on Demon Time as soon as Jalen Green's averaging 25. You already know. All right. So let's continue on with the interview here um when Jalen was asked about what he's going to work on this summer he said keeping my handle tight getting better at catch and shoot threes making reads off the pick and roll next level type things like the corner pass when the low man helps um and then the main goal right now is to trying to get stronger so uh, i think those are all things that you know make sense for him to work on most rocket fans probably want him to work on you know I think with this one we can kind of cover fairly quickly, a little bit quicker than the last two. I mean, do y'all see anything there that you think he left out? Do you see anything there that you really want to highlight? Well, well, thank you for putting us on a timer, dude. Like, we get it. We got no timer. Be quick. No timer. I mean, we have a lot of tweets to get through, though. We do have a lot of tweets to get through, so maybe yeah, just no, no ti timer, just a little urgency. Yeah, no timer, but yes, timer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's no time. My watch does not have a stopwatch on right now. I swear. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna okay, actually show you that. Yeah, we, we got it done. Uh, <laughs> now what's going on? 28, 28, <laughs> sorry, sorry, keep going, keep going. I, we say this as we waste even more time. <laughs> Anyways, kill him. Wait, 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 wait. This is me doing the new emoji, by the way. <laughs> is it, No, that's not your favorite. The, we need to get you some swirly eyes. We need to figure out. I actually, I movie. actually have, I have some glasses that might be on the way with the swirly eyes. So, <laughs> I, I demand that I be on the podcast where you unveil those. Like, I, you can't use those with anybody else except for me. Like, right, like, I like fair. just the fir the first appearance has to be with me. Okay, um, that's very fair. No, I just wanted All to right. derail more. I didn't actually have a point to bring up yet. All I right, go ahead, Paolo. Waste more time. Quickly, you have like 15 seconds left. Yes, this is this is what everybody wanted. Uh, just get stronger. Eat a bunch of of chicken and waffles for breakfast. Go go work out afterwards. Um. I'm surprised he mentioned catch and shoot shooting because I thought he was pretty good already. Uh, that being said, I think what I want is I want him to be craftier. Um, I think something that people really want is a floater. I think that might not be some, that's probably something that you need to dedicate your, like your entire off season to, like James Harden did. So that might be a, a year three, like a, or a second off season thing. Uh, that being said, finishing around the rim is something that he definitely could get better at. We he's crafty, but he's not like. I don't know, like Will Williams or, 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 or something like that type crafty. Um, that being said, and then keeping the handle tight is something that he definitely needs to do, but I think it, it got really a lot better as the season went on. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it, it's basically some, some maintenance uh, practice and then uh, getting better reads on the pick and roll is definitely important, but won't be make or break a year two. Um, and and that corner pass that he went when when the when the health defense comes is that is something that shout out to Itamar we're shouting out everyone today that Itamar's been hammering home about the entire season that he needs to do and 
it's just because he needs to. He is so athletic, and he's going to get to the rim a lot. So he needs to be able to punish when teams over help, and and that's like a key factor to his game. He needs to be able to do this for him to be functional at a fundamental level um, in an NBA offense. And so it's good that it, it's good that that's a focal point because that's that's a, a really big upgrade for for what he can do on the court. Is it crazy that I don't think he's that crafty? Like. <laughs> Like, I, unfortunately, like, unfortunately, last like, time on the show, I know, right? Just kick me he off. Was no, like, he was in the G League. He was in the G League. He was. He he yeah. was because in the G League, like he he did have like that like slight step on everybody. Like he was just he was a cut like a slight cut above some of his competition in the G League makes it to the NBA and like everybody's tougher, right? The competition's that much more difficult. And suddenly, like especially for like the first half of the season, we saw so many drives where like he like got downhill, beat his man, and like thought he had a clear lane to the bucket, went to go lay it up and would like get blocked or get turned around at the rim or like lay it up too hard off the glass because he's like focused yeah. so hard on beating his defender. He's not focusing enough on like finishing at the rim. And so it, I, it, we felt like some it, of it felt like his contact finishing was a lot better on the G League tape that I was watching. Like it seemed like yeah. he was able to really get into the body of defenders in the air and and finish like on balance still. And I don't know where that went when he got to the NBA, but I'm guessing a lot of it was just the physicality level was a lot higher. Yeah, like I don't want to say uh, maybe again I don't want to say that he's not crafty. It's just like it, it it suddenly like went like it disappeared a little bit from his game, and it slowly started to come back as the season went along. And it's not that he's not capable of it. It's just that again I think it was such a big adjustment from the G League to the NBA, which a lot of people, myself included, had talked ourselves into thinking, oh, he's going to be like so NBA ready because he played in the G League, right? And it's like it was like kind of the polar opposite of that. We were like deer in headlights, like what is happening here? This kid was supposed to be the one like ready to start dropping 20 a night because he was doing like 16 a night in the G league and should have been easy. Um, but yeah, like all, all those different skill sets that he's working on this, this summer. I mean, he's going to, he's going to take such a massive jump next year. Like it's going to be absurd what he actually comes in and the damage that he's going to be able to do to start next season. All right. So uh, we'll touch on this one just briefly as well. Um, Jalen said, I was a football player. I didn't take basketball serious until about ninth grade. So, you know, among all the other things that Jalen has room to improve in, right? He's someone who – he's not one of these guys that, oh, you know, my dad played in the NBA and I grew up playing basketball from the time I was four years old and I only played basketball. Obviously, he was a multi-sport athlete, a little bit like someone who the Rockets, you know, may be looking to draft this year in uh, Paolo Bancaro, you know, two-sport athlete, guy that played a lot of uh, NFL. Just had to get some Bancaro propaganda in there just in case, you know, we don't get to it later on in the pod. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people will remember when Jalen had that one play. I, I don't know what position he said. I would assume he was skinny. He probably played wide receiver. Um, but he had that one play where he jumped way up in the air and snagged the ball, and everyone was just like, "This guy's hops are he's, you know on another level here." So he said he said he played some running back, but mostly wide receiver. Okay, there you go. And then it actually changed. It actually changed. He actually had an injury, and that's what kind of like took him away from football a little bit. Where he like he was running a route and caught a pass, and immediately like turned and somebody tackled him, and like his leg like fully extended the wrong direction or something. And it like really messed him up. And so that was kind of like the moment where he was like, yeah, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Like that injury kind of like had him like reevaluating like, all right, football or basketball. And so he, he opted basketball. He made the right choice. Um, I don't Absolutely. Think that's... And to me, to me, the thing is, and just for being quick, how goddamn talented you have to be to be able to just be a really good at one sport and did just switch and be the second overall pick in, in, in a stacked draft class. Like he would be clear number one this year. He would have been clear number one two years look, ago. Look, it, at, you know, being a natural athlete is, is something that like you, you have like some ability like cross sport. Like if you are like a talented, like supreme athlete at one sport, it'll probably translate to another sport. Shout out to one of the greatest movies of all time, The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. Who is is a star quarterback? No, I can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> I did not know where you're taking that. So I know, I right? No, yeah, that that show. is hands down one of the wildest, like dumbest scenes ever to see Adam Sandler go into a prison basketball yard and start trying to school somebody to play a basketball. Oh my god, Michael Irving of all people, Dallas Cowboys legend. Yeah. So it was. Um, the Anyways, but another player, yeah, another player that you know has a big football background that Jalen brought up in the next kind of segment of this podcast was 
Anthony Edwards. And he talked about how that he's had a little bit of a rivalry with Ant- Edwards since high school. Um, they played together at different camps um, throughout high school and stuff like that. And that Jalen holds a lot of respect for Edwards. <laughs> like the USA brother. camp and the redacted camp. <laughs> yes. The redacted camp that we won't be mentioning again. Uh, flawless execution by you, but you know, maybe down the line, this could be, you know, Jalen recruiting. These guys have a, have a close relationship. You never know. Minnesota is very cold. It's not like Georgia. I have been there uh, before. So, you know, maybe down the line, we'll see Anthony Edwards in Houston. What do y'all think about that? Let's just get Lock all it the in. shooting guards. The, 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 two, the two best shooting guards in the NBA on one on team together. Team, yeah. yeah. Sign me up. I'd be all about it. Okay, there we go. Ed- right, Edwards can play in. the three. Like it would Yeah, work. he's a big dude. And Kevin can, can play, play the, the one. At least defensively. Yeah. He's got quickness for it. So moving on to the next next topic they addressed here. He said, super teams versus draft model for team building. I like the homegrown stuff, chemistry, everybody playing together, knowing roles, stuff like that. So – you know, maybe we won't be doing the Edwards super team that we just thought we were going to do and lock in. Maybe we'll just grow organically um, or sorry, should I say free range? We'll edit that one out too. Uh, a lot of misspeaking speaking on this podcast today, but you know, the Rockets have a chance to get another top level talent in this year. And if you're interested in, you know, building naturally uh, homegrown talent, you're really having to bank on Jalen whoever the pick is this year and depending on what happens next year, you know, if they're able to get another lottery level pick next year, those probably three guys, as well as, you know, Alperin Shagun are going to be really your core, Josh Christopher and Garuba as well. But I think those are the, the, the peak tech level guys. If you want to really build a homegrown dynasty that you're going to be relying on. Wait, wait, next in- Okay, C swaps picking. They jump in next year, or next year we're still safe. The, the, we're still safe year next year. After. The year okay. after that, okay. we're totally cooked, and we have to it's be also, really good. It's really disrespectful not to mention KJ Martin unless I missed him and mentioning some other guys. But still, uh, you'll have to see see with, with Biggie how how he feels about you not mentioning his boy. That being said, I think <laughs> super team. I think what Kevin means by super team here is a Brooklyn type super team where just these two guys were free agents and they just sign with the team. I think you building through the draft and then you adding another star is actually or like is actually what's the word? That's not the O word. Uh free range, natural that's that's grass fed. Yeah, Gra- yeah USDA choice grass fed. Not, not non GMO. Yeah, non GMO. I'll, I'll yeah. use I'll use grass fed because I, I feel like that's the most out of context one, and so I use that one. Uh, this grass fed team building, <laughs> um, like it's natural for teams who build through the draft to be good enough at certain points to have the cap space to add a star. Um, I don't think that's this. This is going to be the pictures for everyone in the, the <laughs> thumbnail. By the way, right here was going on right now. I immediately in my head I start I like the moment we said the word grass fed i immediately go go touch grass fed like in my head like that's oh, all I, didn't, I, could... I didn't do my skit oh i messed up i forgot to do the skit oh man disappointing <laughs> i'll do it next time I'll do next, next time. time um <laughs> no like look at the end of the day you're, you're right like when it comes to like super teams right super teams are super teams because it's like two to three stars like kind of like tampering behind the scenes deciding hey like you want to go like meet up at this team right like they kind of suck right now but they've got cap space like Let's go over there, right? Let's bolt. Um, that's what a super team is. Like the original super team was the Miami Heat with LeBron and uh Chris Bosch conspiring to go down to Miami to join up with D Wade. Like they made that happen. Those those three guys talked, they specifically like lined up their extensions so that they can make it happen down there. Remember, Carmelo Anthony was supposed to be the guy in place of Chris Bosch originally, but then Melo got greedy and wanted to take the full, like I think five year max instead of the four year max. And so like it messed up like his like timetable for when he was supposed to be a free agent. So then they like LeBron and Wade were like, I guess we'll take Chris Bosh instead. And it worked out pretty well for him. They got two titles, but um, that would, that like trio, I don't think would have had nearly the success with like Carmelo being the third banana. Besides the point, we're getting down like a crazy rabbit hole here, right? KD decided to go to the Warriors. Like that was like a super team because he was like, you know what? Like the Warriors are already a crazy talented team and historic cap spike that we had never seen before in NBA history allowed them to add another top tier talent to an already established core. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> damn it. This podcast <laughs> is going off the rails. It's the worst one ever, but, um, right, ever. What do you mean? The, you're right. Sorry. W worst in the sense of like, it's so bad. It's good. Um, like when you watch like a really bad movie, but you're still enjoying it. So, um, no, but like le legitimately, I do think the rocket, the rockets are in that position, right? They, they like really knocked it out of the park with four really solid draft picks last year. They're going to have another tier one pick this year at number three. They'll have the 17th overall pick potentially trading up, right? Looking at like, I'm eyeing that seventh pick with the Portland trailblazers, like something fierce, want something for that pick. Um, and like the Rockets have the chance to be like the next like team that's like a, a cohe like a you know a truly like homegrown organization, a la kind of like I mean you look around the league there's a lot of teams that are doing that these days right it feels like the super team is kind of fading away you've got like the Atlanta Hawks that are kind of homegrown talent the Memphis Grizzlies that have a bunch of homegrown talent obviously the Warriors like pre and post KD era are very much well, homegrown talent sorry the Redacteds I can't say their actual name on this podcast yeah I another there thing you is, go. Jackson's it's finally catching on. It's really good that Kalen thinks this way because hopefully this means that he will be Dame like and I want to win with the team that drafted me. Like I'm not gonna want to be joining a super team, or, or at least the fact that he, he this doesn't mean anything. People change opinions, but it's good that at least early on he feels this way because uh, I've already projected my the next 15 years of my life as as, as Kalen Green's 10 years, so. I, I can really sell on that. Good decision. All right. So we are reaching roughly 20 minutes on this segment as well. When we come back, I think we're just going to keep rolling with the the, the Jalen Green interview. It's, it's uh, gotten us some good stuff out so far. When we come back, I do have a very secret surprise for everyone watching, as well as these two guys. They don't know what I'm going to do here. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. And continuing into our final segment here on the Launchpad Podcast, we are going to continue to talk about Jalen Green's um, interview with Bill Simmons. We have a few more tweets I want to get through before we before we wrap up today. So the next tweet that we have is very important, and this is where our surprise comes into play for our amazing YouTube audience. So Jalen was talking about if the Rockets had asked him for his thoughts on the third overall pick. He said, we have the third overall pick. There are three great players. Let's build. Come on. So I mentioned that the team has asked his thoughts about who the player is going to be, and he has delivered said thoughts. So now we are going to use our graphic here. There it is. There it is, everyone. The newly renovated Bancaro boat. I'm sorry if you're not on YouTube. Uh, we will get this out to the rest of y'all via some other means. But there it is, the new beautiful boat. I'm sure many of you want to join. I'm sure Jalen is going to want to join in time. It's so beautiful. Look at it in all its majesty. So in, in all seriousness, do y'all like that the organization is taking in Jalen's input on the draft pick, just kind of generally as a concept? Or do y'all think that you know, they should really rely on their scouting? They should rely on you know their general manager, basketball ops people to make this pick? Or do you think you know taking Jalen's wishes into it is something to do? That is good already at this point in his career. Let me take this one first, Jackson. I'll, I'll just I'll steal I'll steal whatever you want you're going to say. To me, to me, it depends. Well, if Kellen's advocating for one of these guys, then yes, they should totally just take his advice and, and which, which guy him. is that? Which guy is that? I, I, <laughs> I don't it's know. So little messaging right now. It's fine. It's considering it's me saying this. Uh, it's it's pretty unpredictable who who, who I who it might be. Now, nah, just. As a concept, I think it's it's fine to ask Jalen what he feels because, well, he knows these guys, or we know that he at least knows Ivy, Jabari, and Ivy, uh, Paolo, and Chet. Uh, so we know he has some, some insight w being with these guys as they were growing up that he they probably won't be able to get some from anybody else. So from that perspective, yes. Should they let it dictate who they pick? No, they should. If if they feel a guy's better, then Jalen Thin feels another guy's better. They should definitely go with their scouting team because, well, this is an NBA team, and as much as we value the vibes, <laughs> it's it's not that important. Um, that being said, I think I think it's cool. But they they get they they loop them into the mix. I think I feel I feel like that helps them be more invested into even more invested into the franchise that builds that that trust. Um, 
and I think that that can only bring good things in the long term. All right, Jackson unfortunately did not provide a Jabari Jungle graphic for us today, so we cannot uh, do his propaganda like we did the Bank Caribou propaganda. But perhaps for next time, he will provide us with uh, a graphic, and we can plug. We weren't in. going to anyway. I would have, I would have humored him and done it. Maybe not as much screen time as the Bank Caribou boat and all of its majesty and glory. But I hate not being in the producer seat. I want to turn my own camera off. This is awful. No, um, <laughs> don't turn me off now. Uh, but. Um, you guys would not understand the number of people that like DM'd me, like being like, yo, we need like a Jabari jungle graphic. And like, I legitimately was like, I, I can't do anything with a jungle. Like I was like, I was actually like for like a few days there, I was like, how can I make this like kind of meme worthy? Cause like the Bancaro bus was like kind of dope. The Bancaro boat is dope. Like you can like, that's like a, a, a meme worthy, like vessel, right. Of like, you can kind of like, you know, be like, yeah, come on board. Like all this, like, what are you going to, let's go get lost in the Jabari jungle, bro. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work. Like it's just, it's kind of lame. that There was nothing else that we could come up with that like worked better than Jabari jungle. When, you, when you said that, I just thought that my socks getting soggy walking around like a rainforest. I don't know. So it doesn't sound like <laughs> a good time. That's what I should have, you know, that's what I should have done. I should have done rainforest cafe and been like, just like, come, come and join us in the jungle. There's just free like land Photoshop Jabari's Jabari head on like, the rainforest cafe sign anyways um no i i think it's, it's still time like, it's not over yet you can still do it i think it's really solid that the rockets are seeking input from jalen green uh i doubt that they're like running around like any of the other like i doubt like they're like you know looping kpj in or shingoon or anything like that but it it shows that they do view like you know where like it gives it shows a good standing for jalen green with the organization right it's kind of that level of trust where even if it's just done like on the surface of like kind of extending to all of branch, like maybe they're not going to like truly take into account what he says, but at the same time, it's that gesture of good faith. Like, Hey, you're our guy. Like, what do you think about some of these guys? Like, or what do you think about this guy particular in particular? And I do think it's worth noting that in the podcast, the quote specifically, like the word choice that he chose was they asked me about somebody. They didn't say they asked me about like the guys at the top. They didn't we say, Oh yeah, they is. asked me a few questions. They said the word, he said the word somebody, singular, one name. And so like, you can extrapolate that. Stop it, Don. This is like, this is like peak production value. Like, I don't want to hear anything different. These are like the best graphics you'll ever see on YouTube. But legitimately, like, maybe I'm overblowing this because like, whatever. But I, I mean, I'm inclined to believe that like, if you're at pick number three and the common consensus around the league is that, Jabari and Chet are going to go one and two again. Maybe like OKC surprises everybody and takes Paolo number two. Maybe something wild happens and like Orlando comes out of nowhere and takes Paolo at number one or wants to trade down or something like crazy stuff can always happen. But at the end of the day, like all the signs are pointing towards Paolo Ben Carroll being a rocket at number three. And so it's quite possible that the Rockets like hit up Jalen Green and are like, hey, tell us about what you think about Paolo. Like, you know, should he be the guy at number three kind of deal? And then they've already done or are doing their own research, but at the same time, still wanting to extend that, you know, that olive branch to their star player and saying, hey, like, give us some info. How do you feel about this? It's a great sign. If you're going to ask Kevin Green about someone, it's probably going to be Paolo. I mean, we, we all watched that press conference to end the season where he mentioned Chet, Ivy, and Paolo, and he said that Paolo was his boy, and then he kept up with him. Like, they could be asking small. Jalen if he thought Chet was too skinny to play in the NBA as someone <laughs> who was also skinny. You never know. I'm not going to lie. During that final press conference, Jabari Jungle took a massive hit. Like, that was – I remember the referendum on Jabari, like, right after that conference. Ever, like, Jabari Jungle was in the mud that night. It was, like, this was – it was the worst night ever because I was like, oh, Jalen, okay. Jalen doesn't even know who you are, dude. <laughs> doesn't even know hey, you, what? Real, bro. If there's uh, one of saying, us he knows, it's definitely Jackson. I'm no, it's not, not, not me. Boy. He's, saying, he's saying that Jalen Lilboro Jabari. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I could tell what the I could tell exactly where the disconnect was the moment Don started reacting to Paolo's sentence, and I was like, "What?" I was like, "I know, well, why I, I know is, why he's making why these faces. Jackson I need to clear this, this smoke." <laughs> it's like, hey, you have to do my guy Jackson like that. That was mean as hell. Right. Right. We're really aggressive towards our guests on this podcast. Please don't accept come on coming out. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, Jackson's the homie, bro. We can we can cut up with him. But something we will not be making fun of: the great city of Houston. Jalen Green was asked about it, and he said the food is crazy. They got the best food out here, I swear. 
It's where you put the weight on for sure. They got all different types of food out here. I love it. So obviously a completely 100% factual statement there by Jalen. If you've ever been to Houston and enjoyed some of our fine cuisine, Paolo, I'm sure you can uh, attest to that as well. The food is incredible. I want to please. Paolo Give did ship, enjoy him some shipleys, that's for sure. Ship, ship um, me some shipleys, please. Also enjoyed himself some Landry's via salt grass. Um, and then you also enjoyed some water burgers. So some good weight gaining types of food there for sure. And you know, Jalen Jalen needs to put on, you know, good like lean muscle type of weight maybe a little bit less than the shipleys for him other than just kind of getting some carb type of calories in to refuel but you know that's it's a big thing being from houston right having all the different types of foods here you have a bunch of different cultures um represented in houston um in across the different areas of houston so it's good to see Jalen has gotten out and explored that type of houston or that that part of houston and you know started to get comfortable in the community. This is a guy that's probably going to be here for, we'll say at least, you know, six to six to 10 more years, uh, depending on how many contracts he re-ups with us. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, being more involved in the community is definitely a good thing. And, you know, maybe one day we'll have, we have the 13 restaurant, maybe we'll have a four restaurant somewhere as well. And that may be, you know, the final frontier of this for Jalen. Uh, do y'all have any other food thoughts? We need, like like there, there's there's, there's a ha there's a happy medium between Jalen enjoying the food in Houston and Zion eating too much jambalaya in New Orleans. So like we just need to make sure he doesn't go the Zion route. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. You know, <laughs> disrespecting future rocket Zion Williamson already. Not off to a great foot when we make that trade, Jackson. Uh, I'll have to edit that one out as well. Uh more on the city of Houston from Jalen. He said he was super excited when he heard he was getting drafted there. That I didn't really care where I was going. We we can debate that. Uh, I just wanted to be top. I, I would agree with him there. He said, I'm happy where I'm at. I like my situation. And, you know, we got into it with Pistons fans a, a little bit when Jalen said, I want to go first of all to, to Detroit. And then he said, no one wants to go to Detroit. He had the the shirt on as well, the, um, the Deion Sanders shirt, uh, who also famously did not want to go to Detroit. <laughs> And, you know, had a little bit of contentious relationship with that. And, you know, coming out of this podcast generally, some of the stuff that I saw floating around Twitter was like, oh, wow, we didn't realize Jalen wasn't that arrogant. We thought he was arrogant for some unknown reason. I think some of that does go back to the Detroit thing, right? Because I think a lot of Detroit fans were like, hey, this guy is slandering our city. And, you know, rightfully did not appreciate that and tried to make it out to be, hey, you know, this guy, this guy is a, a, an a-hole, this guy is arrogant, all that stuff. When, also you know, I, I brought this up before, being someone who's from Houston, a warm weather climate, I spent a winter up in Chicago and it was a big transition to make. It's not like a natural thing to be up there. It's cold. You have not a lot of sunlight. Like you have to learn how to drive in the snow. Like it's a big life change. And for someone from Southern California, or I guess I guess mid California, um, it was going to be a lot more natural of a culture fit coming to Houston than it would have been going to Detroit. So I, I pointed that out at the time. Um, we'll bring it up again here. And I, I do think it was good as much as we slandered Bill Simmons earlier on this pod. I do think it was good to see, to have his audience kind of see that side of Jalen as, you know, just a normal type of, I won't say normal. He's obviously, you know, he has a lot of the star qualities in him, but, you know, just very humble guy, a guy that's really grounded and kind of understands his place in, in the league, in the hierarchy of the league right now. And yeah, I think a little bit of it was the way, like, the long hair, the, the grill, the, like, the way he dresses, just it's easy to that combined with the Detroit thing to profile him into oh get this guy's like and is really arrogant. It's just it's just how it is, and I think it's it was really good just for people to realize that Kalen is actually he looks like a really chill guy. It doesn't doesn't look like a guy that's always trying to to show off or something like that. Uh, although his game would fit the game of someone who's really arrogant just because it's so flashy. Yeah, I think it was was overall pretty good. But All right, Jackson, Jackson, do you want to throw Detroit under the bus? Uh, like you just threw Zion under the bus here, real quick, or 
I don't think oh, Zion I, fits I, under a bus, but go I ahead. feel sorry for that wow, bus. Bro. more Zion slander. This is definitely going to the description. <laughs> Jackson Catlin of Locked On Rockets crushes Zion Williamson. Under a bus, really really was Look, if you're going to put yeah, me and Zion in a sentence together, I'm not going to be the one crushing him, okay? Like, <laughs> Again, so, you keep setting stop. me up for it. Like, I'm <laughs> sorry. Like, oh my God. No, no I, 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 I really, I really shouldn't. Like, Zion's done like a great job, like, actually, like, cutting back down and like getting, getting his body to a place he? where like he's looking better. He's look, it looked better, right? Like, you saw some videos, like, towards the you end. You look of the like, like a whale. I saw him <laughs> dunk. Oh, damn. God. All right. Now, now, now. Zion's like, never coming to Houston now. We have completely. <laughs> Not, it, it, it is not hard to look better than what he did like three months ago. Yeah, it was it was pretty rough. I mean, right, like, I'm gonna cut crazy. y'all's mics off here before y'all do any further damage. <laughs> All right, um, let's go to the last. Let's go to the last tweet here that we're gonna talk about. Um, Jalen Green's goals for next season: win more than 20 games, make the All Star game. Average 20 to 25 points per game, which, you know, it's a fairly wide range um, in there. And he said, the way I ended the year, I feel like if I carry that from the start all the way through, there should be no reason I couldn't average that 20 to 25 points per game. So um, let's power rank these. That's always fun. What do y'all think most likely – Second most likely and least likely. Uh, I will go first. Wait, wait, wait. It's a, maybe in, can, instead of power ranking, can we just like actually like bet, like or not bet, but like like predict, like yes, no, yes, no, like. Or do you want a power? I ranking like I like the power ranking, ranking best. Okay, I'm sorry. You we'll do power rankings. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, yeah. I mean, we can do yes, no. That's fine, Paolo. Would, but you can be the deciding vote here. Do there, he's, a t- he's the tiebreaker. Or do you want to do yes? Oh, or now no? I'm in a tough position. There, there, there's my boss and there's my co. Wait, my co-host. Yeah, you but, see, it's not easy to see which side you're on. I, I got lucky the first time. I was like, oh, you're over there, and you, you fumbled the bag. Like, oh, he's over there somewhere? No, I'm not. It's outside, and I can't be over there. You, you don't get it. it. The, the earth is a globe, so whoever, whatever I point, it's going to eventually find you. All right. It, it, it's, it's, our, it's our fourth host over there, redacted. Like, that's, you know, that way. So <laughs> now let's do, let's do the power ranking. Right. That's what you want to do first. Let's power do ranking? All right, let's do the power ranking. So, all right, I'm going to say that first. The power I think ranking is most... so easy, dude. Like, oh, okay. no, right, we'll yes no, no, we're doing no, we're doing power ranking. The boss has decided it's game over. It's happening. There. Okay, sure. right. I'm putting my foot first down. The first, first, most likeliest thing that I think will be done is win more than 20 games. I think we're gonna have well, some of us think we're gonna have you know future Hall of Famer Paolo Bancaro on this team. We'll see who it actually winds up being, but with you know. Future Hall of Famer Paolo Bancaro and future Hall of Famer Jalen Green on the same team next year. I think, you know, getting above the 20 win mark should be possible. It was difficult to win without Eric Gordon here this year, but Eric Gordon could be around, you know, until the trade deadline or something along those lines. Again, obviously getting a leap from other guys on the roster will help get some more wins as well. And just generally, I think 20 is a a manageable goal here. It's not super high i think the, the second what, what? you what Go. manageable oh, oh i heard something else i might have had to <laughs> get your mind out of the gutter homie all right no well no it's not even one of those it's one of the situations where you say a word that i've never heard before <laughs> all right so the second most likely thing i would say would be the average 20 to 25 points per game like he said himself, you know, if he carries on the momentum he had from earlier on the season, then he could definitely average that amount. I do think if he starts scoring to that level, we will see defenses key in even more on him and probably make him give up the ball, making it just a little bit more difficult, especially if he's not getting to the line at a super high rate like he wasn't to start out this season. I think that just may take his scoring down a little bit below that mark, maybe like 17 to 19 for sure. Um but I could, I could definitely see him getting up to 20, especially 20 to 22. And then last, I'll say make the All-Star game just because, you know, there's so many veteran all uh, veteran guards in the West. It's just hard to make that All-Star team, you know, at this time. You're going to have John Morant. You know, Steph Curry always gets the 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 Warrior push slash fun vote uh, that also got Wiggins into the All-Star game. Um, We'll see if Lillard has a bounce back year and makes it and then – uh, Luca as well, you know, someone that's probably going to be in the All Star game for the near future. See, this is why 
power rankings a terrible idea because mine, everybody's mine are the exact the same, same years one. as yours. Yeah, like like my my, my power ranking is the exact same as yours. What's there to change? <laughs> I thought someone may say that you know scoring twenty to twenty five would be the one it's, that was the most 20, likely. It's twenty to. All right, you know, you know what we're going to do now? I, 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 How many points a game did Jalen Green score this year? I, don't make me log out and log into the producer seat. I'm signing an executive decision right oh, now. Goodness. We're going to go from power ranking since we all agreed on the three on the three that we just power ranked because we're all going to put them yes, in the exact no. same order. Let, well, let's, well, let's make predictions. Which ones do, Which ones are actually, like, actually going to happen next year? Okay. I'll go first. I'm going to go no to the All-Star game. Yes to the more than twenty wins. Like there's no way, and there is a way. There's there's definitely a way. And predict his points per game average. Right, and and yes to the twenty through twenty five. Just because twenty is pretty manageable. If you go up to twenty five, there's only like eight players. This in the guy NBA. slandered me for saying manageable, and then he immediately stole my word. And you the, taught the, him the a new word. Time. Leave him alone, okay? Jesus, Don. Why are you being so mean, dude? He put I it on a to... post-it note right on his computer monitor so that he could reuse it as it's... soon as he saw fit, okay? It's right here, dude. It's right here. It's actually over there. Yeah, but anyways. That. Yeah, it's actually um, <laughs> Yeah, there we go. We're just starting every, everybody point different directions. Just like when the whistle gets blown in the NBA and everybody's like, this way. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> all right, you know, give, give us give us give us a prediction for his points per game average because that's how that's gonna be our tiebreaker when we like revisit this pod like a year from now to see if he actually like attains any of these goals. I'm writing these down as well. Good. Go with you will be held to this, and if he doesn't score this, you're going to have to do push-ups or something. Let me right, see what his average was for the second half of the season. You have and to I'll do as many push-ups as you were like wrong on your prediction. Uh, prediction? Wow, I can't speak. And you're French as well now? I don't know. Oui, oui, oui. Prediction. Like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to address that. <laughs> So for since for the last thirty two games of the season, Kevin after twenty point seven, so I'm going to go with twenty one. Okay, that's perfect because I'm going to go with twenty one point eight. We're doing point things. So yes, we can do would, point things. He has to do. He has to do. He has to do eight tenths of a push up if he gets it wrong. Like, come okay. on. Then then I'll change mine from twenty. One to twenty-one point seven, so you're screwed if it's lower than yours. Jackson, Jackson, don't go twenty-one point nine, oh, and, he, and y'all he can't. Are, y'all are terrible. No, this and is awful. Can... I hate this. <laughs> Stop it, Paolo. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, okay, so you're getting twenty-one point zero because you know, I'm not letting you change that. What? Shenanigans. You, that's what you said. Twenty-one, right? <sighs> I'm going to go. I, no, all right. Fi- final, final vote, Paolo. No shenanigans. What's your call? Go. 21.7. All right, there. Don, what's yours? 21.8. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to go 23.1. 23.1. Okay. Yep. And I'm also going to go, I'm going to go over on the 20 wins for sure. So yes. And then uh, no all-star 20. game. Okay. So over... We got the picks here, and then everyone went no also a game. So, all right, I think for uh, for reference, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. there were fourteen players in the entire NBA they averaged that averaged over twenty three point one. So, I think if be... Jalen gets eighteen to twenty shot attempts per game, he's going to get twenty three. Like, I don't think that's hard to that's sell at all because he he got what he averaged uh, fourteen attempts per game this season, and. Average seventeen off of that, and like seventeen, yeah, seventeen point three. So like you give him six extra shot attempts per game, and then you also up the fact that he's gonna get to the free throw line quite a bit more next season after like kind of shaking off like the, you know, the the rookie whistle and whatnot. I think he's absolutely gonna be able to hit twenty. Yeah, that that twenty to twenty five range for certain. I think twenty three is not like a crazy stretch. Don, you better not close out before addressing this other tweet. That's this other aggregation tweet that's there. You've got to address. Um, Kellen Green, Little Browing, Bill Simmons. He said, <laughs> he said when I so, um, John Green was was asked about the the Bill Simmons for Kellen Green uh, comment, and he said, when I saw that, I was like, damn, I don't know him. <laughs> what I do? To him? <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from. Which means Kellen Green legit went on Bill Simmons podcast and the Little Bro them. There's 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 no bigger. Like Bill Simmons, Bill Simmons is now property of like joint property of Jordan Alvarez. 
uh, Kyle Tucker and Keon Green. So that's two franchises. We just need the what's the new draft pick for the, the Texans? Stingley. Derek Stingley. Yeah. Stingley. He's the next one. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jalen. There's been a lot of dialogue on this. Um, how people thought the optics of this came off. Obviously, this is the second kind of damage control podcast that Simmons has had to do in this situation. Um, I do think Jalen kind of gave him the out a little bit by coming on, but you know, like I said earlier, there's there may have been some utility of going on and being able to show that he's like a humble, you know, grounded guy to the Bill Simmons audience. Overall, I don't think this is really going to change the calculus of Jalen Green in the league. You know, I I don't think going on this podcast with Bill Simmons is going to affect how he's voted for for All Star games and stuff like that, or you know, All Star teams or anything like that. But overall, I don't think it was a bad appearance by Jalen. Um, I think he handled himself well, especially you know, going into the lion's den of some guy that was just trying to prop up Herb Jones at his expense. So. Do y'all feel any differently? You feel the same? If any final thoughts on on the the Jalen ultimately the Jaylen experience, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think they they you know. Again, I said this earlier, but Bill Simmons never really like apologized for the whole situation, which I, I would have I would have garnered a lot more respect for him had he just come out right and either said like either a like double down on it and continue to been be like an ass about the whole thing or b because at that point like you're just doubling down on your situation, which like you know whatever continue being misinformed, but. Like, or if he'd come out and said, Hey, like, like at the, you know, on the jump, right. Hey, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I shouldn't have said that or whatever, but his apology, like, wasn't an apology, right? He was, we were just joking. Like he never at one point said, sorry. He never at one point said like, I shouldn't have said that. Like he never owned up to it. And he also never really gave Jalen green an opportunity to like counter what he said. Like the closest they got was they were discussing the Pelicans and like Herb Jones and like the run that they went on to end the season and they became kind of a winning team. And that was like all Jalen got to say about the point is like the Pelicans became a winning team, like the second half of the season because they made like pickups at the deadline. Like he kind of gave some examples as to why the Pelicans were in the position they were in to like have Herb Jones be in a position to, you know, quote unquote impact winning. And apart from that, like they, and I don't think Jalen wanted to go on that pod and like, debate bill simmons about making look he got the all rookie first team not right great and, and uh, you know this pod was like a win-win for both of those guys because bill simmons gets to like kind of rehab the image a little bit and, and try to play nice with jalen green jalen green gets some national media buzz because he goes on a big podcast there's a reason he didn't just jump on like some like local you know random po like rockets podcast or like this one you know, like this one like lor like it, there's a reason he didn't sit down and do like a, a think piece with like fagan or eco is because like the Bill Simmons situation, like it, it, it was a win-win for both guys. So I had something to say. Did you get an F Bill Simmons in the chat. Sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. No, I, I was gonna say. I was gonna say like <laughs> press F for Bill Simmons. There we go. Like not even press F for respect. <laughs> I wasn't even gonna say that. I was gonna say straight F Bill Simmons because well, we already know that in a week or two weeks or so, he's gonna be shitting on the Rockets again for whatever reason, be it the draft pick or. But I don't know. Like he came off his last podcast before this one, doing the exact same thing. So that's not gonna change. Um, I mean, that being said, I guess it's good for Taylor. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really rate Bill Simmons doing this because he was clearly only doing it because this was not just a Teal and Green thing. This became an NBA wide thing when when Draymond Green addressed it. Um, so and then yeah, Joel and Beat as well. And Joel and Beat, so th those are two huge names. So I just, uh, I don't think there's that he was there was any like paying respect to Jalen Green part of this. It was just I need to save my brand somewhat. And these guys who are really important are made comments about it publicly. So let me just try to get something back there. And uh, I don't know, I just. Never like Bill Simmons. I don't like Bill Simmons. I'm not gonna like Bill Simmons after this. Uh, it, it's just he has done as much negative press as anybody else, including Chris Mannix, on Houston. Every time he he has a chance to do so, he will do so. He has done so and will continue to do so. So, I mean, 
kind kind of indifferent about it. And hopefully, Leon got some good press out of it. But I yeah. highly doubt it. I, th- I I think it's possible. And again, to to echo my same sentiment from earlier in the show, right? It's possible to still be very frustrated with how Bill Simmons kind of handles his you know media persona, how he uses his platform, all of that. But at the same time, acknowledging that there's a reason he got to where he is, right? Like he is like. Like that interview with Jalen objectively was a good interview. Like, and that's me being as objective as I can about it, like separating my biases and just sitting here thinking like that was a solid interview with Jalen. Right. And and again, that doesn't change my perception of Bill Simmons. Likewise to you. Like I I'm still frustrated at the fact that like constantly at every chance he gets, he will slander Houston. He usually has nothing good to say about the city, about its players. Like that's just who he is. Um, And he's done that for years. That's been his shtick for a while. That said, I, I think it's still important to be able to acknowledge, like, hey, even when the worst person you know makes a good point or does something like decent, like give them, you know, give them their flowers at least, or give them credit, I should say. It's it's so insanely weird that so many guys out there make it their stick to go after Houston, be it on one spot or another. Chris Mannix, Bill Simmons, like it, 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 there's a lot of them even even on national hey, they, they they hate us because they ain't us that's the big thing right <laughs> I mean, so the, i guess the they, they have to live where it's cold for like seven months of the year and they have to that would make me angry people. so like i yeah. mean i guess i guess the last thing i'll say is i would much rather have them do whatever they did to Jalen and have Jalen win the award than be like james harden where he deserved three awards and we are on the right but he didn't. He only got one of those awards. So I would, I would always straight him getting the award and the backlash for it, rather than him not getting the award and being the sweetheart for not getting it. He should have gotten it, whatever. Because yeah. uh, at this point, and and it's pretty telling that me as an NBA fan for what six years now, seven years now, that I'm already at this point where I don't care. I, I know at the end of the day, what's going to count is what's on that player's list of awards winning. At the end of his career, nobody's going to look back and say Tim Sutton should have had three MVPs 20 years from now when they talk about the best shooting guards of all time. So I would much rather just get the award because down the line, nobody's going to care about the circumstances. People care about the name written on, 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 on the award. Yeah. So we've reached time. That's going to do it for us today. Uh, just w- real quick, one more time. Of course, you can find me at Don Knock. You can find the pod at Clutch City CR in the description there. You can find the link tree for YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify links. If you haven't subscribed on YouTube, please do that. We are getting very, very close to our goal. And again, we want to thank everyone that has helped us in that journey. Paolo, to the people where they can find your stuff. Yeah, y'all can find me at Paul Alves NBA. That's P A U L O A L V E S N B A. Everything I do from podcasts like this one to the live shows on Twitter Spaces, which, by the way, will probably be tonight as you're watching this. Uh, so, yeah, follow me on there. And Jackson, tell the people they can find your stuff. Track me down at JT Gatlin on Twitter and be sure to check out all the different places that I talk basketball and Rockets specifically. Uh, Locked on NBA, Locked on Rockets, State of the Rockets, and of course, bi-weekly here at the Launchpad Podcast. Perfect. So until next time, y'all, be safe. Very important time to continue to be safe and go Rockets.